Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, November 25th, 2020 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Quick diary today with a couple just uh, quick notes about TCP resets. Uh, for example, why you may see TCP resets without sequence number, a sequence number of zero, or why you may see TCP resets with a payload. So for the packet nerds here, uh, something uh, to read up on. And VMware this week did release a bulletin of announcing a critical vulnerability with a CVSS score of 9.1, affecting a number of their products, uh, VMware Workspace One Access, Access Connector, Identity Manager, and Identity Manager Connector. The problem is there is no patch available. Instead, VMware did publish some workarounds that essentially involve moving a configuration file. So if you're running these products, take a look at the bulletin. At this point, no exploits have been cited in the wild. The vulnerability was reported uh, privately. An attacker also needs to have access uh, to the administrative console on port 8443 and they do need to have uh, some credentials to actually execute the commands. Okay, well, uh, we have a long uh, weekend here ahead of us and uh, I'm a strict believer in not starting Christmas stuff till after Thanksgiving, uh, but a little exception here for special uh, guest at SCOTUS to talk about uh, his uh, latest encounters uh, with uh, Mr. Kringle. Hey, Johannes, thank you. I do appreciate you making that exception. It's uh, great to talk with you again. Yeah, so uh, KringleCon coming up again and the Holiday Hack Challenge. Uh, can you tell us a, a little bit about what we should expect this year? Oh, sure. So uh, remember, this is something that SANS does for the community every year. It's completely free. And it, it'll launch the second week of December, but people can register for it now. But the idea is it's super high quality cybersecurity challenges. So it's kind of, you know, kind of like a CTF or even a cyber range. It's all set with a holiday theme. And every year, some nefarious villain tries to destroy the holiday season. And you have to help Santa Claus and the elves figure out who it is, figure out why they're doing it. And then most important of all, you have to stop it. So it's got a lot of piece parts to it. It's got uh, obviously the challenges and the answers, but there's also a, a sort of a video game component to it that you can like hop in and everybody gets an avatar and you can kind of jump around and it's social. So you can play either solo or as a team. There's also a custom album of music that we release with it too. And the music is set in the video game. Um, and uh, I mean, we really try to make it fun. You know, the, the, the storyline we try to make really interesting. We got some cool twists and turns this year. So, um, so you want to hear about, you know, some of the stuff coming up this year in this one? Yeah. And of course, no, I don't have high hopes in 2020 for Christmas, but, uh, you think we can still save it? We can still pull it off as a community? Oh, I think so. This community, are you kidding me? They're good. But the attacker this year, uh, has some pretty uh, nasty tricks up his sleeve and that is, you know, one of the things that's different this year. Um, in years past, you had to figure out who the villain was. You had to do some attribution. But last year, so we've done this holiday hack now. It's, it's been over 20 years. And every year we try to make it just better and better and better. Um, but last year, we ended on a cliffhanger. You found out that the villain was the Tooth Fairy. And the Tooth Fairy was trying to subvert the holiday season because she was jealous of Santa Claus, you know, he gets this one special day, the Tooth Fairy has to work all year round. So, so that was last year's villain and sort of the conclusion. But at the very last scene of last year, if you get into that final room, you can see the um, Tooth Fairy uh, in, a, in an orange jumpsuit because she's going to prison. But on the floor, there's a little tab of paper. And if you click on that, it opened up a message from the Tooth Fairy where the Tooth Fairy had written a note to herself that she was working with Jack Frost to subvert the holidays. So this year we're actually going in. It was kind of like at the end of the Incredibles. Remember when Mole Man came out of the ground? And yep. It, yep. so after they solved the thing with Syndrome, Mole Man comes up. That was the idea here. You fix everything associated with the Tooth Fairy, but suddenly you realize Jack Frost is involved. And in this year, you're going to have to figure out what has Jack Frost done and how can you subvert the nefarious plan of Jack Frost? 
Um, and there's there's some really cool technologies uh, that you'll get to contend with this year. I mean, there, there's some really interesting defensive uh, technologies, some interesting offensive technologies. There's some good crypto stuff this year. There's some RF stuff. I mean, all kinds of neat things people get to uh, to play with, sometimes for the first time. Um there's always there's hints, right? The elves have these great little hints. If you hop up your avatar next to an elf, you can click on the elf, and the elf will tell you about a problem that the elf is having with some technology. They're often like, you know, foundations of uh, sys- sysadmin stuff. The elf will say, "Oh, I'm having trouble with this, or I'm having trouble with that." You help the elf fix it in their little terminal, and then once you've helped the elf fix it, the elf starts giving you hints so you can solve the other challenges. So, so that's kind of cool. And, uh, oh, I got another really cool announcement to make. So if you look at the Holiday Hack Challenge, we've got like the Holiday Hack Universe, right? H-H-C-U instead of M-C-U. Um, so in the Holiday Hack Challenge Universe, if you go back two years ago, KringleCon, oh, that's another aspect of this. It's a conference where we have great engaging speakers and they're speaking about topics that will help you solve the challenges. So we did our first KringleCon back in 2018 and it was done in Santa's castle. So your avatars are hopping around the castle and such. And it was packed. We had, I think it was 13,000 people that played in 2018. And it was, it was almost like the halls at DEF CON or some of the B-Sides conferences. You could not walk around because it was just so densely packed. It was definitely not COVID friendly, definitely not social. Actually, I guess it is COVID friendly, but not socially distancing. Right. So we moved in 2019 to Elf University. We call it Elf U. It's the largest venue in the North Pole, at least it was. And we held the conference there and we had 17,000 people play in 2019. Now we're up to 2020 and Santa needs a bigger venue. Um, So he's actually been working for the last year to do a major upgrade to his castle. He's added more floors. He's got a magical elevator. There's this giant courtyard out back, big new castle. And um, so he's inviting everybody to come at this big new castle. Again, this is totally free. We're expecting 30,000 people to play this year. Um, maybe we'll get more. Maybe we'll get less. I mean, we'll see. But I do hope everybody will uh, you know, come and do this. You can, you can register now if you go to holidayhackchallenge.com. So you can register and then you can play the 2019 game just to kind of practice. And then we'll launch second week of December. So now I never really trust a tooth fairy like that entire and I was sneaking my bedroom at night and such that always kind of freaked me out. Uh, so kind of happy that uh, Tooth Fairy got uh, finally locked up there. Oh, yes. But uh, <laughs> then, of course, so, uh, there was always that, that the cash aspect of uh, of Tooth Fairy. Uh, any any prizes? Now, I know it's free, but uh, oh, yeah. any any prizes that people can win? I'm, I'm glad you asked. Yes, we have some really cool prizes. Um, the, the top prize is a Sans class, which is kind of neat. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we have other prizes of... Um, Networks continuous licenses. So you get to play Networks continuous for four months. We have some uh, random draw prizes of t-shirts. Um, and also RSA conference is going to give us uh, a prize where you'll get uh, free attendance at virtual RSA conference coming in May of 2021. So there's, there's definitely prizes, but I mean, I think, you know, in my opinion, the, the biggest prize is building your skills while having fun and then maybe meeting other cybersecurity professionals and working together we really try to emphasize that sort of fun aspect to it and then sort of the networking and, and being part of the community. Um, I mean, that's, that's, that's why we do it. That's what it's all about. But that said, the prizes make it fun, you know? Yeah. And uh, give you an incentive a little bit uh, to spend some time on this. I uh, remember some of years prior where people were kind of complaining about you know, that it was sort of a, a big time uh, sink for them and keeping them away from some more productive work. But then again, you know, uh, you need to have fun at, at one point, and yeah. uh, that's a great way to have fun there. And yeah, any sort of final words to anything that people should maybe study up on or any yeah. Christmas carols to review? To have <laughs> hints? <laughs> well, I think playing the 2019 challenge is a great way to practice. With respect to time, the cool thing about this is you can spend as much or as little time on it as you want. So, you know, if you, if you give it an hour, I'm telling you, you're going to smile and you'll probably solve a challenge or two. You know, give it 10 or 20 hours it'll be a really good time for you and you develop real practical cybersecurity skills. Um, and then, you know, there's one other thing I wanted to tell you about, you know, this year, something weird is happening at the North pole. I've talked to Santa and he seems fine to me, but I've talked to some of the elves and the elves tell me that Santa is behaving 
kind of strange. He's been sort of erratic lately. Hmm. Um, we're not exactly sure what's going on there. But I figured, you know, if we're going to invite 30,000 people to the North Pole, traveling there through, you know, their HTML5 enabled browsers, they should know that Santa, he's he's just a little weird this year. But uh, I'm sure you'll figure it all out. You'll, you'll, you'll figure it out once you get there. That sounds like a ton of fun. Uh, so where can people register uh, for this? Yep, go to holidayhackchallenge.com. And if you go there right now, we've got our coming soon page. You'll also see some interesting graphics up there. Uh, you'll see our three French hens because it's KringleCon 3 French hens. Uh, you'll see a couple of other little tidbits associated with the storyline. So you can register and then you can jump in and play last year's game now if you want. Um, and then again, second week of December is when we're going to launch this year's game. It'll run until January 4th in a competitive sense. We do keep them all up year round though. So if you wanted to play Holiday Hack Challenge 2018 or 2016, you, you still can. They're, we keep them up so people can practice all the time. But uh, 2019 is a great one for you to get some practice in. And then 2020 is launching in just a few weeks. That sounds great. So the link will be in the show notes. Uh, thanks, Ed, for join, joining me here. And well, uh, for everybody else, uh, talk to you again on Monday. Bye. Thank you, Dr. Jake.